Welcome back to this speed run. We are going from 500 up to 2200 plus with the Ready and the Nimzovich Sicilian. Okay, can we find another opponent? Back to the black pieces. D4, first D4 game. Um, we're going to try to go with the semi. -sl oh, our opponent plays the London. Okay, I'll use the same anti London line I've been using, which is this one. You go E6 first to defend. Uh, c5 and then you play c5 h3 bit weird bit early for this move it's making me wonder if i could try to play queen p6 there's still knight c3 then and i don't know if i would really want to take i'll just keep developing wow okay So I'm kind of thinking about this and bishop b4. Also d takes c4 first is interesting. Usually c4 uh, is not what you do in the London, more often c3. And certainly if you've already wasted a move on h3, then opening up the center in this way, probably gonna be risky, I would think. Well, I guess I'll just keep developing. D takes C4 also possible. Well, now I'll definitely play D takes C4 with an additional tempo and a free pawn. And actually, a double attack on these bishops. I don't know if white can uh, get out of that. Because this is pinned, so the knight is not defending right now. Is there any defense to this threat? I'm not sure if there is. And the opponent just resigns. Yeah, this is, you know, usually with the London, you want to go for this pawn triangle with c3, and you don't necessarily want to commit to h3 so early. That wasn't, that's 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 a London, not a lesson, not only for the London, but for every opening. Be careful with those little rook pawn moves. Um, Time is so valuable in the opening. You want to be using your moves to develop new pieces, not making weird, fiddly little pawn moves that don't really do anything. C5. Okay, we'll still go with G3. Well, okay, I'll continue my setup. And let's go C4. So it seems my opponent, I guess, sort of has a setup in mind, but well, that's fine. Bishop f4, kind of tempting here. Uh, probably just d6 would kind of shut me down. So I'm actually going to go, I think, for b3 and bishop b2. And I do kind of have a nice space advantage here. Let's go rook c1, line this up. I can even think about potentially knight d5. Uh, sort of a temporary, not even really a sacrifice because pawn takes, pawn takes, and then I will get the piece back. Um, it's like knight d5, e takes d5, c takes d5. The only thing is then if like queen b6, say, um, I don't know if that whole operation got me into a better position than when I started. So I don't know, h6 seems like my opponent doesn't have a whole lot of useful ideas in the position. So maybe I can just keep improving. I kind of have a feeling knight d5 probably was the best move though. That'd be an interesting one to check. But you know, I can just do this. Probably my opponent should actually trade here and play bishop c5. Knight e5. Mm, okay. So I know I just said uh, don't do this, but I've already developed most of my pieces. So now I've got some more moves to play with. And I mean, I can think about playing f4 at some moment. 
let's just continue with this sort of generically good moves for as long as we can. Oh, I don't know. If I want to play f4, e4, maybe I don't want my rook over here. Maybe I want it over here. Hmm, but now f4, this knight doesn't have this retreat. That might be a bit problematic. So it has to go back here, but I can even bring a knight into c6 now. So I think maybe black would have been better advised to play bishop d7, because now knight c6, actually I think this wins... In exchange, the rook has to go on to this diagonal, and then this is going to be a discovered check. So this is what often happens in these slow maneuvering games. You actually, it's not easy to go forward directly, but if you calmly improve your position, your opponent may kind of sabotage themselves. Okay, well, I'll still take the rook. This looks safe enough as far as I can tell. Knight takes a6, queen b7, doesn't really look like something I want to get mixed up in. I'll just take. And, you know, a position like this is not, like, necessarily the easiest to win with the extra exchange, with the position still being quite closed, but objectively this should be a winning advantage. Mm -hmm. and make sure not to get forked I guess is the big thing I would like to get my king off this diagonal at some point but I think as long as I exercise a bit of caution the extra exchange should be should be winning. Not really easy for um, my opponent to do much because I have all their pieces involved. Probably h5, h4 would have been the plan for them because this one I can just take. So we're getting another pawn and we are getting more trades, which both things that are good for us. And kind of nice that we control both open files. Bishop comes out. I can almost think about, um, you know, set up some sort of checkmate over here. I'll just uh, start by doubling. Sorry about that, my monitor just uh, cut out for a moment, but okay, let's just play queen g4, start eyeing up this pawn. 
with the checkmate ideas. So f5 is a potential threat, which I think we can still do. This defends here, I guess, h5, but I'm going to do this anyway. So if h5, I think I'll just drop my queen back and this knight has to go back into the corner. So that should be fine. So we've got the extra exchange, got the extra pawn, got the attack. So looks like, you know, it's all, it's all working. So they do find the best defense, but still in really good shape. There's even sort of a funny idea of h4 and takes, takes, and this rook is going in, but yeah, I mean, none of this really changes the, the equation. And we'll just go in for the attack to try to finish it off. I think just bishop takes h8 is simple enough. Because once this king co comes over here, my major pieces on the g file are going to be a problem. And my opponent resigns. One blunder. Interesting. So what was the blunder? Hmm. Sometimes the chess.com thing says... Okay, yeah, it does like knight d5. And I was thinking takes, takes, queen b6. Maybe here I could have, maybe here knight f5. Okay, knight f5. The engine likes this. Yeah, I had a feeling knight d5 was the idea, but I didn't quite see how to make it work. Hey, if you're enjoying the speed run, don't forget we are taking it up to 2200 plus. So if you want to see what it takes to beat players at every level, don't forget to subscribe. All right, back to the action. So we've got another Sicilian and another Nimzovich. And yeah, you often, when you play this move, you often will see your opponent think for, for some time because they're not used to seeing this. So far, all knight c3s, no e5s today.
Bishop b5 check, actually quite a good move. Uh, not one you see all that often. But then e5 leads to a very interesting line here. Uh, so if it takes, we actually don't mind. We can just drop the bishop back. But knight takes d5 leads to a really interesting line where if you can move your knight... Okay, so we get this. So we won't worry about that for now. This line is generally pretty good because we've got the bishop here. We have a nice pawn center. This bishop is even making castling somewhat annoying for white. If f takes e7, it's an interesting choice that I recapture. Queen takes e7 is almost crushing. White has knight e2, and I don't have any way to increase the pressure. So maybe just bishop e7. Hmm, this... That's kind of weird, though, because my opponent's just giving me an extra pawn. I think I'm going to take this way towards the center and start building like a giant pawn center. So my bishop's kind of weird over here looking at this pawn, but I could eventually do something like b6, bishop b7. And I do have an extra pawn, and the way my pawns are arranged, I have a ton of control of the center. Yeah, so I could go... I don't know. Let's like, maybe I'll just start with rook g8. Mm. Maybe queen d7 castles. Yeah, sure. That looks decent. So I'm not sure if I want to put this pawn on e6 or e5. The only sort of downside to my position is my king does not have a super safe spot to go. So I guess maybe you could have argued for e takes f6, bishop e7, castles. That would have been quite reasonable too. So e6, d takes c5, bishop takes c5, knight takes d5 is not something I really want to allow. I'll start with takes. And maybe just e6 here. Yeah, I can't say I love how I've played this because when you're up a pawn, you don't really want to get into some weird situation where your king has no safe squares. That wasn't really necessary, but I am still up a pawn. I do still have the bishop pair in the center, so I think it's a good position, just um, maybe a more imbalanced position than was really necessary given where I started out. And I'm going to take here and create even more control of the center now and support this pawn. So bishop queen there. I think I can go bishop g7 castles. F well, no, not f5. That would just be taken. Bishop e7, also possible. Let's do this one, though. 
then at some point I can open this uh, open up this diagonal. Got to watch out for queen g3, then castles would run into bishop h6. So if queen g3, maybe rook g8, or I could even just go back, bishop f8. I think I will castle. Yeah, rook a d1, knight e4. Kind of getting a little, a little uncomfortable here, but yeah, we're still okay, I think. We do like king h8, rook g8. Necessary f6. Opponent's getting quite low on time, so I at least have that going for me. So yeah, we definitely have to get out of this pin now. Probably f6, e5. Knight a4. Okay, so my opponent wants to come in here. I should avoid queen e7, bishop d6. But I guess rook g8, knight c5, queen c8 is okay. I do still have some... Now they have to watch out for some discovered attack ideas. Look, queen a3 is still kind of annoying. Hmm, okay. Bishop e5. So I don't think I want to take for sure. I could play f6, which looks kind of appealing, because then I can play e5. I think this is what I want to do, and get these pawns rolling. Bishop's really awkward over here. <clears throat> I am threatening bishop f8 now. With an attack on the knight and the queen. which I don't think my opponent answered. Bishop f8, queen can move here or here, but then I still have a d4, which looks good for me. I'm gonna make sure not to get like mated somehow here, but I don't think I am. And then if knight takes a6, do I wanna take the knight or the bishop? Oh, okay, I missed that completely. Oops. Hmm, <laughs> that's not so good. Well, but maybe bishop c4, bishop d5 is kind of interesting. Yeah, I completely missed bishop b4. B3, very bad move, because this is exactly what I wanted to do anyway. So I can play queen b8. Looks kind of good. 
Although it does walk into knight d7 stuff. What about just rook b8, bishop back, rook b5? Looks good. c4 okay b4 this must be good for me i think this knight's very loose Okay, and then I think this is finally going to end this game because this is a pin. So after a good opening, my opponent really got into that, back into that. Uh, but I do think we will finally take this one down, assuming we don't get mated somehow here. But I don't think that's going to happen at this point. They do resign. Yeah, two blunders. Not surprised because that one definitely got away from... Oh, I, I'm out of game reviews on this account. I think E takes F6 probably. You know, and just uh, castle here with a nice pawn shield because... Yeah, this got way too chaotic. Although apparently this, this is still quite good for me. So it wasn't, oh, see, where, where did I really, hmm, the engine likes castle queen side here and maybe just e5. So maybe, yeah, by hanging back a little too much, I even got into some trouble here for a moment. Yeah, and I thought queen a3 was one good move. But here my opponent actually had great compensation, but we managed to come back, finally. Okay, let's see if we can uh, play a little more solid in this game. I will play d4 to prevent e5 here. You could, of course, also play g3. I guess e4 was certainly possible there. Okay, well, I think here, yeah, I'll prevent my opponent from castling, which may not really be a big deal. But just play c6 and king c7. Uh, Probably they're totally fine, so yeah, maybe this wasn't the smartest way to play the opening, actually. Rook b8 is a bit weird. Do they want to play b6? So I'm thinking about coming in here either way. So even bishop e3 is kind of annoying for black to deal with. Norm normally taking on a7 is not really a thing you do very often in the opening, but Thanks to this weird rook b8 move, it's sort of a possibility. And now this is this is a threat. I think I can just go ahead and take this. Now these light squares are, uh, are a problem. So knight e7 probably should be the move.
but still, I'm a pawn, and my knight can pop back out when necessary. So yeah, even in an endgame, you can, uh, you know, kind of attack or play with the initiative. So I could take, or I could take this one first, which is better. Maybe, maybe bishop takes b6 is even better. Undermining that bishop. So if takes, we're going to take this back, and the king is even forced over here. It appears the opponent has disconnected. Are they disconnected? Are they coming back? They're probably disconnected. So yeah, takes, check, king, and then maybe just knight c4, hitting two more pawns, offering a rook trade, and like kind of stuck with their rook in the corner. So, okay, relatively quick game. Yeah, if you, in, in this type of situation for black, the plan you really want to go for to secure the king is c6, king c7, and that actually would have been fine for them. But we're up to 1450. I think that's a good time to call it a day. I'll see you next time when we go for 1500. And don't forget to follow because we are going all the way up to 2200. So I will see you next time. Hey, if you made it to the end of the video, first of all, thanks for watching. And if you want to learn much more about these openings, you might want to check out uh, my courses on Chessable, where I explain everything in much more detail. You also get the move trainer technology to practice the moves. So check those out. The links are in the video description. Thanks.